Let's start by having a look at the non-colorized skull. Now let's just have an overview. You notice that the skull is one solid object, especially in the adult, and we do have joints that are here, and we'll make reference to them shortly. But as we look at the skull, we see it's quite solid and that we have a number of openings down here and we'll address some of those openings. Now let's get to the bits and pieces. Let's start with this large bone down here. And of course, this is the mandible. And the mandible is interesting because of course it articulates with the skull. Unlike any of the other bones of the skull, it actually has an articulation within the skull itself. Now let's just have a look at the mandible by itself and we can see that there's a number of bits and pieces to it. When we go over here we can start to see that we're looking at the mandibular ramus. That's this large piece over here. And then up here we have this notch and that's a mandibular notch and coming off the back and the posterior aspect to it, it's the condylar process. And as we move forward, there is another process. And let's just back out here so you can really see it. And this is a coronoid process. So there's lots of bits and pieces when it comes to the mandible. Now I've just put it back into its place. The mandible also has this very important articulation and an extremely important joint. And this is the temporomandibular joint. And you can see it right in there. And of course, this is a joint that a lot of people experience dysfunction with and pain. Now let's move to the colorized skull so we can really identify the various pieces. Now the nice thing is a lot of the major bones in the skull have the same name as the lobes of the brain that are underneath them. So if you happen to know those lobe names, you'll be familiar with these bone names. And as we start to look, of course, we have the blue one here, the light blue, which is the frontal bone. Now you can see it occupies the anterior part. The frontal bone actually started off as two separate bones and they then fuse during uh, development and during growth of the individual. You can also see it makes up part of the eye orbit. And if you look inside, you can see by the various different colors. Now each different bone has a different color here. You can really see that a lot of bones go and contribute to the orbital. Uh, cavity here. Now let's continue on with the major bones. So here we had the frontal and then we're going to move here and now we're looking at the parietal. And I'm going to turn and you can see that there are two parietal and that they do have a joint that uh, attaches them. So we have the frontal, the two parietal and let's go to the back and here is the occipital. The purple one's the occipital right here. And if we rotate down, we can see the occipital has a big hole in it. And this is the foramen magnum, and that is the point of attachment uh, where the spinal cord passes through it and the uh, vertebrae uh, C1 will articulate with this. Let's move over to the side now and start to identify a few more. Here we have the large temporal bone, and you can see the temporal bone sends off a process that becomes part, not the whole thing, but part of the zygomatic arch. Move in front of there, and now we're into the zygomatic bone, the orangey one. If you look in behind, you can see the, the yellow one. And the yellow one here, what we see right down there, and it runs all the way, is the sphenoid. Now, the sphenoid is one of the most difficult bones to visualize. Now, if I rotate here, you can see the sphenoid is, can, is also makes up part of the orbit of the eye. Now let's move to the anterior aspect of the skull. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky because there's a number of small bones that we can see from the outside. Once again, here we have the frontal. Down here we have the maxilla. The maxilla actually fuses. There's two parts that come together and fuse. Now up here, right in front, are the aptly named nasal bones. So we have the nasal bones. And then as we start to head into the orbit, we can see that we have the yellow one. And it's a small little one. And that is the lacrimal one. Now this may, name may sound familiar because you may be familiar with the lacrimal gland. And yes, indeed, this, the, this, this bone has a passageway for the fluid to pass from the eye, surface of the eye, into the nasal cavity. And if we go deep down there, we can see a bone down here that is the ethmoid bone. So those are some of the major bones 
of the skull. Now let's look at some of the major sutures. The sutures are the uh, joints between the various bones. So let's start off with the one uh, between the frontal and the parietal bone. And this is known as the coronal suture. And let me turn it this way so you can see. The coronal suture, it runs up here between the parietal and also the frontal and goes up and over. Now let's have a look at the suture that runs between the parietal bones. It starts and we, as we move towards the posterior part of the skull, we can see it works its way all the way to the back and then it bifurcates and becomes a different suture. But this part is the sagittal suture, which, which is of an appropriate name given that it's in a mid-sagittal type position. Now let's go to the back of the skull and let's remind ourselves parietal bones an occipital bone and we have a suture that runs up and over here and that is the lamboid suture. Now let's look at some of the special bony features on the skull. Let's start with the nasal cavity and if I look inside there you can see that there's these white looking shelves of bone and these are there to increase the surface area and these are known as nasal conchi. There are three pairs of them, a superior, an inferior, and a middle conchi. Now these conchi are, are quite important because not only do they increase the surface area of the nose, which helps it to warm the air, to moisturize the air, and trap uh, debris that's in the air. Um, as you breathe, the air actually will spiral as it moves its way to the back because these nasal, nasal conchi, as you go back, actually twist and sometimes they're referred to as turbinate bones. Another feature on the skull that's quite important is this. This is the mastoid process and you can see it's, it's part of the temporal bone. And the mastoid process, of course, is the location for at one of the major muscles of the neck and that is a sternocleidomastoid will attach here. We also have the opening for the auditory canal here. As we have a look at the base of the skull, we can see that there's a number of openings. I'm not going to give them all names. This is an introductory video, but of course we'll highlight some of the major structures. And that is the foramen magnum, which I made a reference to earlier. Now as we look up here, we can actually see this is what's called the hard palate. As I look at the hard palate, I can see that it's made of two pairs of bones. Up here I have the maxilla two parts of the maxilla, which will fuse um, during development. And also back here, I have part of the zygomatic, which contributes. So between the four parts here, this makes up the hard palate. Now some of the bones on the skull are really difficult to visualize what they look like uh, when they're out of place because some of these have very unique shapes and they fall into that irregular bone category. And the two biggest culprits uh, to really cause confusion in students, one would be, let's start with the first one, that would be the sphenoid. Now the sphenoid is the yellow one that you can see here. So you can see there is part of the sphenoid uh, uh, being shown right here. If I go to the base you can see part of the sphenoid is also there and you can see it wraps around and does the same thing on the other side. And if I actually look into the eye socket that is part of the sphenoid and that is part of the sphenoid. And the sphenoid is a very unique shape. It's often referred to as being butterfly shaped. So here, now I've removed the sphenoid and you can start to see how complicated its shape is. And you can see why we're seeing it from different parts. We can see that we have the lateral part. We can also see the part forms part of the base of the calvarium, the inside of the skull. And it has a number of processes. So this is the sphenoid. And that's often why people really struggle to get a really good grasp as to what it looks like. The other bone that people will often have difficulty sort of visualize what it would look like when it is uh, separated or isolated from the skull would be um, right here. And that would be the ethmoid. That's the cream colored one right here. We see the ethmoid here. We see it there. It makes up, of course, part of the eye socket. And then if I actually look inside the nose, remember we talked about the conchi? Uh, some of the conchi are from the ethmoid and it also has a very unique shape. Here's the ethmoid and I have isolated it. And you can really see how 
how it really does fall into the category of a regular bone. It has a lot of processes, it has a lot of bits sticking out, and it has a number of ridges. And you can see here are the ridges that make up some of the conchi that are in the nose. So the ethmoid, once again, a very difficult bone to uh, visualize when it's within the skull to get its whole uh, shape. Well, that was an introduction to the major bones, some of the uh, sutures, and some of the uh, anatomical parts of the skull, some of the special features that we see. So thanks for listening and if you found this worthwhile uh, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and a like and if there's any of the videos you'd like me to uh, put together that may be helpful to you, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.